writing, uh, in the writing process, the creative process, uh, do, do you, when you work with a partner, uh, somebody sits at the computer or a typewriter, and uh, I, I always get this uh, uh, image of uh, the other writer walking around the room with a cigarette dangling from their mouths and ashes dripping all over the place and saying, no, let's say this or let's say that. Uh, can you fill us in on how collaboration uh, Works well, that of course wouldn't be, that wouldn't be politically correct today to do that. Uh, but uh, as, <laughs> as there's no smoking anywhere in California, as you know. But uh, <laughs> the which my European friends think is uh, savage, and I remind them. You know, I, I have a cousin. I was in Paris once. I'm just going to interpolate because I'm not interested in your question. Uh, and and <laughs> she was actually Polish. She was the girlfriend of my cousin. And and you know, I talk about smoking, and she said, Well, you know, you have uh, all you eat all of these chemicals in in your food over there. And I said, Well, yes, but when I eat chemicals, I'm not you know in effect you, but when you're smoking, you know, I'm getting cancer. But uh, no, I only had a partner for a brief period, for mm -hmm. a, a couple of years. Uh, uh, and uh, when Tony and I worked, we essentially, we worked together to, to, to process the story. Mm -hmm. uh, and neither of us smoked, by the way. But uh, the, uh, when it came down to, to, to do the teleplay, we worked separately. Uh, mm -hmm. We would each take an act, or I would do more of one show, and he would do more of another, and then we would pass it to each other. I don't know how people work, especially in sitcom, which I later did. I couldn't imagine uh, sitting with somebody, because when I write a comedy, and I've done more comedies probably than drama, although you'd never know it by this interview, uh, <laughs> the, uh, You're pretty funny th guy, things right? just come out naturally. I uh -huh. mean, that's what makes people like David Letterman so good, uh, or, or, or other, what we would call a wit, or if you remember Dick Cavett. And then there are other people that are comedians. Yeah, but they have writers. They have, they have writers that no, give them that, no, that stuff. Some of the stuff, but when David Letterman is interviewing somebody, a lot of that stuff is very fast, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's just coming out of the conversation. And, and, and that's often when you are writing a script, you know, you have the basic story, but you all of a sudden, you, you're trying to get into the various characters and something, you know, just comes in the same way that you're being amusing in a conversation. And, and I don't know how that would work with somebody doing it with you, you know. Mm -hmm. In any event, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you said you were working long form. Does that mean you're working on TV movies, movie Try, movies? What? Yes, and that especially overseas, because uh, I've sold a, a couple of things over there that are in process at the moment. But, uh, you know, you write screenplays. And that was one of the reasons that I uh, sort of uh, drifted away from episodic television. And that might be a little bit regretful now, because uh, unfortunately in the industry, when you've been out of episodic television, it's hard to get back in. So I'm sort of working on that a little bit now. But uh, to write screenplays, and to write legitimate plays. And I've got some people in New York looking at some plays right now. Because mm -hmm. it does interest me uh, a great deal to see something that you fashioned yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it, it basically you were talking earlier about uh, how do you get inspired or how does yes, a writer. Yes. Uh, very often it's, it's something that I'm interested in, whether it's, uh, I'm very interested in politics. I worked for a senator once. I, I saw. Alan Cranston. I worked work for Alan Cranston right. in Washington. And I. Uh, uh, happened to see an article uh, once about uh, a princess, uh, and I thought, uh, without giving the story away, which I won't hear, because I know your <laughs> audience is vast. I believe you're, so am I. you're, you're in, uh, I believe, in <laughs> Bucharest, Romania. You were just uh, hired. Uh, that uh, y you know, you just uh, things grab at you. I, I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to, you know, just recycle what other people have done, because there are a lot of like remakes being done right yes, now. Yes, and, and, and uh, an extraordinary amount of uh, remakes. Which which are rather boring. I so some of add. them. Some of them are better than others, obviously. An affair to remember, of course, I, people don't r realize, was a remake. The one, the one that Deborah Carr did, the, right. the most famous one, was a remake of s uh, something I believe Irene Dunn was uh -huh. in. Right. And uh, and then, of course, uh, Deborah's remake was done into I, the, the, the failure with Warren Beatty and, and uh, uh, Annette Benning. I, I kind of liked uh, Warren Beatty and Annette Benning. I, I never movie. saw that one, I must I, but I, it didn't I really do well. I really enjoyed it. You but, but I, I, uh, uh, I, I'm always interested in where the new ideas come from. And you're talking about new ideas. Uh, how long does it take you to write a screenplay? Well, if you have the idea and you really are committed to doing it, you can probably do one, at least a first draft, in anywhere from a month to six weeks. If you, you know, really set y your heart down, it takes me about two or three weeks to set down the story because I try to do the, what, what we call beats. And uh, and then from the beats, uh, I don't I, I don't usually write a, a full outline unless I'm being paid to do it because I just want to know where I'm going, that sort of thing, and what's going to happen, and then I just start writing it. And and, and of course it, it's it's usually over long. I'll write like 180 pages, 
Really? Oh. And then you have to somehow get it down to 110 or 20, you know, but, uh, and that's sometimes difficult. But well, do you do plot points uh, when you the beat. write the script? Yeah. Is the, that what the, you call mm -hmm. beats? I call the beat. Plot. I'll do like an A, B, C, D until I run out of letters. And, <laughs> and if, if I got more than 26 beats, uh, give me Give me just the generalization on, on beats, uh, on verbalize. Well, how many stories are you going to tell? You know, there's always a main story, and then there are a couple of smaller stories, and who are the characters? And I like to write a uh, sort of a who's who or a biography of my main characters, and then I, I let it sit, and then I come back to it a little bit later, and I read it, almost as if I'm reading it from an encyclopedia or, or some other, you know, um, something like that, of a playbill, you know, credits, resume yeah. thing, and they seem real, you know, uh -huh. as, if, as, as if I'm reading about somebody that exists or somebody else's creation, uh -huh. and that helps you because very often you can then uh, get plot things or not so much plot things but situational things that they would do because of their personality that you've read about in this little biography. You, you know? mean if somebody was, we'll say, you, you'd have to have their occupation, wouldn't you? Right, or, or quirks, yes. Are they a student? Are they a lawyer? Are they uh, a, a cashier at a supermarket? Whatever. But quirks? But, quirks? But they're an al like alcoholic. Maybe they uh, giggle a lot or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, you can then do scenes that play up that, shall we say, personality trait. Isn't it rather abstract, though? I mean, you first you have your a beginning, a middle, and an end on your story. Then you have your... Uh, cast the characters and then you're uh, doodling around, I, I, I don't mean to be that flippant, but you're doodling around with each character, maybe their quirks, uh, perhaps this character that you love would not fit in the <laughs> in the screenplay that you are writing. Does that ever? Yes, and sometimes, especially when you've written 180 or 220 pages, which I once did, <laughs> sadly, some of your favorite scenes are excised from the product. This happened in a play of mine. I had a really good scene in a play, but I had to reduce it or, you know, you know make it shorter. And uh, I had to get rid of this wonderful, I thought, scene, which, you know, hopefully it'll be like Rogers and Hammerstein, where you probably have heard, or maybe you haven't, I don't no. know how literate you are, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Roger and the Hammerstein, you know, they write a lot of songs for each other. Uh -huh. Everyone yeah. doesn't necessarily get in. And apparently, I hope that I'm not doing this wrong. Uh, w w will the piano person start playing at this point? I'm Play the sing. piano. Uh, don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. They, they had written a song for South Pacific. Uh -huh. And the, the, it just didn't work during mm -hmm. the, the, the tryout period. And so they, they then, it was the number that ultimately became Younger Than Springtime. And, mm -hmm. uh, but apparently they liked the melody. And uh, later, it, uh, it was in another musical, and it went da 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 dum dum da 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 dum dum da 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 Do you know the song that I'm Sure, doing? getting that, to know Exactly. You. But that, now, in retrospect, you can't imagine that that would be the melody for Younger Than Springtime, or even that no. sort of a song. Yeah. And they did, too, but they, they kept it, and they used it later to probably better effect, because you see Getting to Know You all the time in commercials. You don't see Younger Than Springtime that much, although it's a great